So, hello everybody that is watching on Facebook or in Zoom or later this recording. Um, I'm very happy uh, to host um, the Ukrainian meeting today. Karin Dolek is present, but she is in a noisy place, so she asked me to give the welcome. Ukrainian meetings um, is a series of talks that was initiated by Karin. It's hosted by Nine Lives magazine and supported by Deutsche Fotografische Akademie. And uh, today we have the pleasure to talk again to Dmitry Kostyukov, um, who is a photojournalist and he also works for the Bird in Flight magazine. And uh, the magazine is hosting the Bird in Flight Photography Award that I have heard of many years before. And I think last year I was also in a talk with you, Dimitri, and um, one of your former award winners uh, from Bangladesh, Shatman uh, Shaid, yeah, which I also know. So I'm curious um, to hear more about yeah, the Shatman, board, yeah. its history and yeah. uh, would like to give you um, the word, please. Can you tell us more about uh, Bird in Flight? Yeah. Thank you so much for the presentation and uh, I'm happy to share. Yeah, I'm very happy to share with you uh, ideas behind this award and how we're trying to make it uh, adopted to the current situation in photography world and also in uh, our society. I would start from the uh, point that like I work as a photojournalist and photographer for around 15 years. But then after this, I decided to participate in a new program in a KBK, a Royal Academy of Art in Netherlands. Uh, and uh, this program called Photography in Society. So organized by, um, mostly by Donald Weber, also mm. um, a famous uh, photographer. And uh, uh, there are, so it's a, as I told, it's a brand new uh, Magister two years program and uh, with completely new approach, which based on idea that uh, photography, especially documentary photography, um, has some problematic points uh, due to the fact that the world changing very fast, a lot of new issues are coming and a lot of media still use very classical approach to photography and these classical tools just do not allow you to speak about new issues because it's just different so like classical photography let's been shaped um, in 60s, 70s, with ideas of Henri Cartier-Bresson, uh, also uh, magazines like Life magazine and Time magazine. And obviously now we have, and like at that time, nobody was thinking about internet, Me Too, Black Lives Matter, and all this stuff. So I was participating in this program, which was very interesting and like fruitful and open-minding. And then I was invited by my friend to be, a, a, be in a jury panel first year, uh, like one of the years in Birds and Fly. And then I also next year participate as one of the curators and next year as a part of the team. So uh, what was the idea? Um, the general idea of, uh, of the prize is um, try to find new languages, new tool, new approaches in photography uh, for telling about contemporary issues. I have two questions. So the, the awards is uh, open for everybody, uh, all around, the, like for people all around the world. And um, this is an interesting moment because like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, you said um, there's a longer history of the Birds and Flight Award. When did it start? I don't hear you at all. I think there is a delay. Um, the others here, can you hear me? Yeah, Christoph can hear me. Um, uh, it's it's uh, the the word is not so has a long history, but the so what is birth and flight? Yeah, yeah, I yeah I hear you. 
Yeah, yeah, I also hear you. Maybe with some delay, but I hear you. So the Burton Flight um, is a is an inter, uh, internet magazine, um, uh, in mostly uh, written in Russian language. It also has a Ukrainian and uh, English version. Uh, but it's interesting uh, because, like, we were talking about uh, difference in Ukrainian and Russian culture yesterday. Um, but this kind of very difficult moment started not so long time ago. And that's why this magazine was in Russian language. And it, it was no problem with this. Um, so when Russia say that like a lot of people are not allowed to speak Russian in Ukraine, it's completely not true because even like media was completely working in Russian languages and like it was completely normal until maybe the last moment. Um, so this media writing about news and new trends in uh, not only photography, but in visual country, uh, culture in general. And then this prize was made like four years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and during the last three years, only four or five years ago. So and during the last three years, I participate in this award first year as i mentioned as a in, as one of the jury and two two others years as as a curator or uh, one of the organizers um so we at the year when i was a curator it was a covid year and uh, obviously we started to think how to show works uh, of the winners and at the beginning it was like Obviously, we were showing works in the gallery, like uh, for the first two years. But then uh, during the COVID, it was impossible. So I remember this moment I was sitting in, uh, in the Netherlands. I was thinking how, how we can show it. And I, I came to the idea to show it through the you know, web cameras. So an idea is to make pictures available for as many people as possible. Because, of course, we know that like to the gallery, it's a very particular part of the audience going to the galleries. Um, uh, but at the same time during COVID, it was in general impossible. So I decided to, to use print pictures as a posters, put it on the street. Um, in, um, in Europe, it's not rare. It's quite, especially in Paris, for example, it's quite, uh, it's, it's happening a lot. But the idea not just to put them on the walls, but to put them in front of the surveillance cameras. Um, so these surveillance cameras, which are uh, showing uh, videos from the streets 24 hours uh, a day. Um, so visitors can see, so the picture exists in a free and public space, literally offline because it's on the street you can go and communicate with pictures as a posters you can touch them you can move them but they're the same online so we made a website and you can all uh, so there is a link uh, on the website which you can open now this person flight 20 uh, could you please open it mm -hmm. so and on this website we united the videos uh, no this is a pictures and also could you uh, open the website. So this is a website. You see, it has uh, three versions, and uh, in the middle, mm -hmm. on the middle, you have uh, videos which you can click and see what is uh, what is going on. So on the on the middle, you see the and the green wall with the pictures. So it's not uh very close up but you can see on them and what is going on because it's like people coming and uh passing by uh, it was some people who removed these pictures and you see what is interesting so this is a video camera in the art gallery which is closed due covid uh so no exhibition but we use this camera from this art gallery like it's a, a surveillance camera which we use to show uh, our exhibition so also on the map uh, on the website you can uh, download them download the map and uh, go during your weekend or free time and see the exhibition and then on this website you see all the pictures which is of the winners and you can uh, so if you click on one of the pictures you can move them 
So you can make your personal layout. You can just and you can uh, you see the plus. So you can uh, make them uh, like a copy of the picture if you click on the plus. Um, so the same like with the posters, because you know the tra tradition of the posters is put one to another, you know, like before election, you have a portraits of the people who want to be a president, like a lot of them. So you can make your personal layout, zoom, make them bigger, smaller. You can uh, make as much um, pictures as you want and uh, play with them. So, and this is like with every uh, finalist. And then on the right or left, you see the, the uh, you can go to another fi finalist. And yeah, and the, uh, yeah, and so you can do the same. And on the top, you see the video from the web camera. Uh, could you go up? Yeah, so this is a web camera which works 24 hours because now this website is in a mode of like it's not online now, obviously, because it's 2020. So this website now exists um, in the kind of like archive, right? So the video is uh, one of the moments. And um, so we put these pictures in a very different uh, locations. So some of them like a uh, hipster places, some of them are uh, uh, just a popular places where like a lot of people go to job uh, every evening or morning. Some uh, pictures, uh, some are places for the tourists. So it's all around the city center. And as I told you, you can download the map and make your personal um, exhibition tour with uh, explanations. And also near every, every, um, uh, exhibition, you have a QR code where you can have all the information. So yeah, this is, for example, near the one of the cafe, and so people can see. And then we use a tradition of um, uh, posters, as I told. So we put it on the wall, uh, sometimes repeating the same uh, picture several times. And what is important for me, so uh, typical white cube uh, gallery space, is it's absolutely natural, right? So you have a art piece or you have a work and all the space go around piece. So kind of the, the, the work is the most important part. And when you put pictures on the street like this, they adopt to reality, literally. So they adopt to the uh, surface. So if you put on the brick wall or if you put it on a metal wall, so if you have some, I don't know, uh, cracks on the wall so the picture uh, shaping literally the same as reality around us so you can also uh, open some pictures to see uh, I document a little bit um, uh, how it looks like and you will see the size of the print so and when we were selecting together with other creators uh, the place where we put so we we, tr we were trying to choose different so, yeah, this is information about website, which is on the Birds and Fly website. And could you please go to the uh, to the pictures, which was in the folder, uh, ah, yes. which I have sent to you? Um, so, yeah. So, for example, the first one, um, this is iconic, iconic uh, mur, um, which was created in Soviet Union. And this is the most... Uh, this is a, this is architecture piece, which was produced with the biggest amount of copies in the in the history. So this type of the wall has a um, particular name, and was designed when one of the designer in Soviet Union. And obviously, he was uh, now he's a migrant. As, as soon as you cycle up, he migrate to U.S. and work as an architect. So because like all the it's in a way, it's tradition <laughs> that all the best, uh, a lot of uh, best uh, and smart people from Russia, they just immigrate. And you can see that on this mur, um, uh, uh, on this wall, uh, pictures are repeating. And they, uh, so it's like, um, um, so this, this, the, 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 the structure of this wall made the way that like, the rain clean itself, clean the, the wall uh, by itself. So the pictures are repeating this this structure or oh, so and then you go to another picture and uh, it's a brick wall no the the third one no the, this is we skip the, so you see the brick wall and it's uh, the street raterska which is very popular um 
Uh, and so some pictures are on the glass, some pictures on, on the brick. Um, could you go ahead? And this is Andreevsky uh, Spusk. So it's a, it's a, one of the most touristic um, street with, you know, like, uh, it's like a bit like a Rue Rivali. Uh, or, so where all the souvenirs and like uh, crafts things made. And this is one of the, uh, the lady who was selling this stuff every day. And she was super happy that we put uh, this... Uh, uh, pictures on the wall and what was also interesting for me uh, with one of the producer uh, one of the producer of the prize she has a brother who who is 15 or 16 years old and he came to to help us and he spent like a lot of hours to with us to um, helping to put these pictures on the wall and then we were uh, passing by one gallery and asked him like why he never came to this exhibition like a, lot, a previous year and if he would come to see the exhibition if it would be in a gallery. And he told, of course not, because galleries are full of millennials. And that moment, of course, I felt myself very old because, but, but it's interesting that for people who are like 15, 14, 16 years old, a space as, a, as a gallery spaces are just uh, very uncomfortable because there are too many old people, for, old for them, you know, like, and, and when it's on the street, and because it's connected with the YouTube and was connected with the internet, for him it was very comfortable. So he told that because in his uh, school, he do, uh, he, he do a school newspaper, and for him it's very uh, important how to connect paper, sc uh, you know, school newspaper, which he put on the wall, uh, you know, in the school. But obviously a lot of students... Uh, read now all the information online. For him, it was very interesting to see how he can uh, use these tools to unite offline and online world for, for his school. And obviously, like, uh, my dream, my goals would do kind of uh, bring this uh, connection of offline and online ideas also to European awards and, um, and uh, like other countries. Uh, because I we have can, a couple of in, questions. In, in, in Ukraine, we, we, we could, like, there are a more freedom in terms of, you know, like, um, a collaboration with uh, a local business, local administration, like, regulation is not so strong in terms of, like, Sure, sure, sure. Please, please go ahead. Um, I think we have like 15 seconds delay. So I don't hear my, you again. My question like will I heard come you that you have questions and then I don't hear you. So just keep that in mind to give me some time to ask. We have a couple I of questions hear here from the people that are in from Korea. Yeah, now I hear. Christoph. Um, one question okay. Okay. is um, before we talk okay. about I, okay, board, I hear, yeah, I hear. Um, I do like that mix of yeah, putting sure. up posters sure, sure. of uh, having a very interesting um, interactive web page and having the, the web cameras. It's something I have never seen like this. But before we talk about the price, um, there are a couple of questions regarding the magazine. Um, the magazine. Um, uh, how old is the magazine? When was it founded? Uh, what is the artistic directions? And uh, have there been limits of what the magazine could show, exhibit, publish? Mm, so let me start from, uh, so the, the, the magazine was founded in, uh, in, uh, Ukraine, in Kyiv, uh, and, uh, this is, uh, one, uh, so there are a lot of IT startups in, in Ukraine, and, uh, one of them is, uh, Deposit Photos, so it's like, uh, you know, the platform where you can, uh, uh, stock and um, share your pictures so a little bit like Flickr or we transfer something in between and uh, so they wanted to have a blog and uh, then uh, uh, one of my friend uh, uh, Evgeny Safonov uh, 
he proposed them to do not just a blog about the work of the company, but just to write about photography in general, to uh, to make uh, people's interest in photography and people's education about what photography is more. Because the thing is like, yes, we're surrounded by millions and millions of pictures, but mostly not the, the most interesting, not the, the most... Um, advanced in a way that like there are so many great photographers and great artists but a lot of this work are not in the public space we we, we re, like we need to go to see them like in a museum or like uh buy like professional magazines like you know like in france you have like a, i don't know polka magazine or uh, fish eye magazine or foam magazine in netherlands or gap magazine so if you are not really in photography it's a very low possibility that you will see it just in, you know, like in uh, social media or just on the street. So the idea was to, to, to bring more um, good quality content to the public. And uh, I actually don't know how old is it. I think it's like around 10 years. Yeah, probably 10 years. And uh, it has like uh, more than 1 million uh, views per month. Um, um, it's mostly, uh, re uh, yeah, most of the people read it in Russian, but also in in uh, in English. I have a question um, regarding. Uh, so, what was the other question? Uh, us... Is it possible to show every? So, everybody, uh, like every photographer, can can apply to to the awards, and we are happy to have um, international, like uh, like people from all over the world. As the magazine is yeah. in Russian language. Um, uh, mm -hmm. How does it divide? Like, how many uh, people yes, from sure. Russia actually read the magazine? Is it possible to read it from Russia, or is it blocked? Yeah, of course, people. Of course, uh, people from Russia uh, read it, and it's it's quite popular in Russia. The thing is, like, uh, uh, just due to the population, um, uh, there are more people in in Russia. So, because the population of uh, Ukraine in Ukraine is uh, around uh, forty millions people, and population of Russia is one hundred forty five millions people but also you should consider that like there are a lot of russian speaking people living uh, abroad in general uh, and it's not only russians or ukrainians there are people from uh, old uh, countries who used to be part of the ussr so it's like kazakhstan uzbekistan tajikistan so, so in all these uh, countries people able to read uh, uh, in Russian, and also uh, there are big uh, migrants community, mostly in countries like Germany, Canada, U.S. Mm, so all all these people um, uh, read in Russian, and this is a very big question which you touch, which uh, um, it's connected not only with only with the bird and fly, but in general with a lot of Ukrainian media, because like the question is like. You want to write in Ukrainian because, like this, you develop Ukrainian language. Like, I mean, it's normal to write in the language, which is official language of your country. But at the same time, if you want to be understood by your neighbors, you need to write in Russian. And even if you will look to the speeches of uh, Zelensky now during the war, during all these months, very often he do presentation in Ukrainian and then he says, and now for our neighbors or now for the Russian and then he, or he switch in Russian language or if it's a message which is purely uh, goes for Russia, he switched to Russian even without saying that uh, uh, like I, I, I'm talking this for Russians. So this is a big, uh, it's a very, very big question how to deal with this in general. What is the future of the bird and fly? Um, yes, you did answer my question. 
Um, what is the future of the bird in flight price, especially for the year 21? I see you have a short list already online. Hello. Um, how can this proceed in hello, the current hello. situation? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the the future will be two thousand twenty two. But we we uh, we all yeah. It's already exists in two thousand twenty one. So. Uh, last year we decided to do it differently so every every year we're trying to show it in a, a new ways and so there are several things which was important for 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 me and for my colleagues uh, and there are several questions on which we raise what but we don't know the answer for example should we support ukrainian artists and photographers in addition to what we do for international photographers, like from photographers from all, all over the world who apply to the awards, or we should uh, only consider the quality of work. Uh, and so because when people send the p uh, pictures and jury see them, they don't see the name, they don't see the country of origin, so they just... Um, uh they just see the work and uh, a, a, a explication of the work so that's why for example we thought like should we do like special nomination for ukrainian artists or not should we do a special prize to support ukrainian uh a special like section to support ukrainian artists or not um so because different countries have a very different tradition of this um, and another question, which we uh, like, which is very important for me, and which we uh, I found. So, idea of the prize is to get the most unique work, unique with a with a new unique language. But then, a very interesting thing happened that we realized that not the best work uh, win the prize. Why it's happening? So, for example, you have a let's say 10 uh, people as a finalist, and then jury should give a mark from one to 10. The thing is like the most uh, unusual work, uh, so jury has a very different opinion about it. So they either give 10 or give one. Um, but for the average work, uh, average work, they have like, I mean, good quality, but something what uh, people already saw, they got like, five, six, seven. So as a result, uh, the, the uh, average number for the uh, count for the work uh, higher for something more traditional than for very new work. Uh, so because you can easily count like one plus 10 split it in two will be less than seven plus seven uh, counts in two. And um, so I started to work uh, on the idea how we can change it because we know that in, another option is, for example, when curators can um, manually change something. But it creates a situation when like, uh, it's not very objective because curators can have their personal preferences. They can have... A, um, they can have a, just friends or some works which they saw already several times and and pay more attention to this work one of them i'm, uh, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry to find in like this do you hear me is, uh, I, he doesn't hear me. and she has experience of organizing uh i think you have uh, to delay uh, film well festivals coming. and in film festivals we know for example the creators work are very important because like uh big names like like tarkovsky for example they would or like uh Yes. Oh, so, so now you I hear me, Dmitri. I, I, I think there is a, a, a delay. There is a no. delay of 20 already, seconds, or? but please just continue to ask Karin. He will get okay. it in 20 seconds. Okay. Um, I was disconnected for a few minutes, so I, I couldn't listen to...
how you how you created why you created yes. and what is the purpose uh, I was very I, I'm, I'm a curator from France I, I co-created the festival circulation I'm very into young European photography and different culture mix and we are all, always very eager to try not to be not to French franchise uh, the, 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 the works we see and we're trying to see how this works are showing something specific from the region uh, they are created in. And that's also something I realized when I was in Morocco. Some works that I saw in Morocco were very, for my French eye, very obvious or uh, I don't want to say boring, but not that significant. And I have been dragged into understanding that uh, they see things, as you said yesterday, same object, different meanings, and they, they have a whole world um, being attached to something that we don't even see. So I'm very, very uh, surprised you don't have more uh, actions toward specific this about Ukrainian photography and more, more uh, pushing it, being aware that uh, it's difficult to exist when you have so many good photographers from all around the world that have good, good studies, good good culture, good education, uh, good camera, and, and, and access to a lot of structures. While you may not have the same in Ukraine, but you have also a very specific field of artistic uh, culture and photography culture. We, we all know a lot of U uh, Ukraine photographers uh, and Russians, and that there's a, there's a real uh, aspect that, that creates a very big difference. So my question is, how is it that you went into something that is good quality, but um, open to everything and everyone, and not pushing uh, this very specific um, identity. That's my very long question. I hope you understood it. So if I understood correctly, uh, it's like why we do not uh, specifically support like uh, uh, Ukrainian photographers and like, uh, yeah, I, I think you're very right. Like I'm absolutely agree with what you told. Uh, and it was a uh, deba, uh, uh, debate uh, in, uh, between organizers, how we should do it. And I think you're very right. It's just a cultural question uh, because when I moved to Europe, I realized that here in different countries, it's a very strong support for uh, local photographers. Um, so like French institutions support French uh, photographers, uh, like uh, Dutch uh, institutions support Dutch photographers. So of course they support not only their local photographers, they, they have some awards for in, like international community, but also there are some of them which is specifically works with the local community. Um, I think we just have complexes. We have like some stigma about this and people think that like, if you have some exceptional conditions, you're not good enough. So a lot of people uh, think that there is no need to support and uh, that you as let's say Ukrainian photographer should be in a battle with like the competition or the battle or like a competition or something. So if you want to be really good, you should go through the competition with let's say all around the world and only I like this my question can now, um, that you work. But the others really don't do that. And this creates very, very difficult situation. It's, it's, it's difficult and, and unbalanced um, then. My personal idea is different. I think that like we should uh, specifically support, but for a lot of people, uh, uh, but also just an idea of this uh, for a lot of people, uh, and I also feel it. Yes. Yes, others. Yes, 
Yes, but also it's uh, for a lot of people, it would be strongly connected with a nationalistic idea because like you separate people just based on their nationality. So if you're Ukrainian, you have this. If you're not Ukrainian, you don't have this. Or like if you're Russian, you have it. And, like, so uh, a lot of people just do not like this idea by default. So they say like, you can do it, but not with me. So I like I know people, curators who would say like, I would never uh, do something specifically for any group of people. Everybody should be like in uh, equal conditions. And uh, and I understand what, so I'm just, uh, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. Uh, I think that both ideas could exist and coexist. And maybe it should be like, mm, for there is another price like just for Ukrainian photography, for example. Um, but a lot of creators think that like, if you do, price just for inside the country it's not strong enough so it's not uh, you this works as like don't go through this selection of international level it's just a different idea of like how people i think we have a lot of complexes that uh, our country um, is not good enough our opinion is not strong enough we're not as cool as a lot of European countries. At the same time, of course, people understand that we want to fight with a lot of colonial ideas, as I told, because like we have situation when European photographers or like American photographers came to Ukraine, ask very strong Ukrainian local photographers to be just a fixer. They go, take all the ideas, photograph the same, then they win all the awards with these uh, pictures. And it looks like, for example, Ukraine covered by international photographers more than it's covered by local uh, photographers, which is not true. But because like, again, we live in the world where we have so many pictures, only like very often only pictures which go through the awards and get awards and then like through this getting public attention we see only this work. So it's a very complicated question. I don't have an answer on this, full, full answer on this, but this is something what we constantly discuss and trying to fix. Uh, and also I think it's very important to have advices from the very local uh, uh, community and uh, communities who will tell you if this work is really strong or if it doesn't strong, even for you, it might look different, uh, different. So by very, very local, I mean like people who are also in the field like right now and they working on the same topic. So they can, uh, they can explain you why um, this work looks cool for, for you, for example, but in reality, it's like very commercial or I have just a question made to about, uh, uh, win awards. The local Ukraine. Yeah, I see you asking the question. And, um... The, what I know from the outside about Ukrainian photography is that it's the Odessa photo days, then it's bird in flight, and then uh, the photo museum in Kharkiv. So these were like the three players that I could uh, see mm -hmm. from uh, my perspective. But I'm sure there is much more happening. And how connected are you inside the Ukraine? Is there a Ukrainian photo bubble? Who else belongs to this bubble of yes. Ukrainian photography that you could recommend to us? So uh, you're absolutely right mentioning uh, this. Um, uh, but to answer uh, this uh, kind of simple question, we need to ask ourselves what we count as photography. For example, social media and especially Instagram is in Ukraine is uh, way more uh, popular and influential than, let's say, in France. It, there are several reasons for this, but uh, so, but there are a lot of photographers who photograph and work specifically for Instagram and uh, they uh, build their careers and it's com it's completely another world and some of them 
becoming very popular uh, in US and they moving to Hollywood and they do production for in, in, in you know, like in, like in Los Angeles. So because it's much more kind of pop, uh, pop style. Uh, it's not so much orientated on like uh, cultural institutions. Uh, and these photographers could be very popular and influential. They, they would not apply for Birds and Fly. They will not be in the Kharkiv school, uh, but uh, they will be very popular. Um, I, I can like prepare a list, like it's difficult to like, it's uh, and, and, and share with, with our audience. Um, also, uh, there is, you know, that Kiev is very popular for production. So a lot of European and American production uh, going to Ukraine for, for doing video clips or movies or something like this. And there are a lot of very strong guys who we can not know their names because they like uh, behind these production studios. So usually you, hear, you see just the name of production or you see like, like I don't know, cult play band the video music music video but it was a lot of uh, ukrainian artists who involved you know or also there is a boom of um, uh, new fashion designers and uh, also there is photographers who in fashion um, also there are a lot of uh, young girls uh, especially who in uh, feminist uh, anti um, anti patriarchy movement and they they do the like mix of photography and 3D and drawings and stuff like this, um, and most of them are orientated on social media too. Uh, so there are very different movements. Uh, uh, also, if we talk about like for example, uh, guys who are photographing LGBT, for example, Karina on your festival, you already show, for example, Ant uh, Anton Shebetko, I think he was last year. He lives in Amsterdam, but he's like Ukrainian, he's photographing Ukraine. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of people who for different, like now LGBT um, situation is a bit better in Ukraine, but like, uh, like five, 10 years ago, it was not like this. So some people could live in Europe now and uh, and but follow this topic that's why i'm saying you know like there are, it depends like for yourself where people will build the border this is photography you know this is like this this is photography i'm interested in but if uh, your readers uh, uh, are interested i can make a list of people to follow with pleasure well uh, in germany we also have like different uh, bubbles of photography and uh, there's a divide between um photography as a uh, marketing tool for advertisement for products for fashion and then uh, photography as a social commentary as activism as art so um, the world uh, the dfr the german photographic academy moves in is photography as an artistic means so it has an artistic approach and most of the festivals that I have been to and, and where I met the people and where I also met like the, the Shilo group and Karin, they have this intersection between uh, photography as art and also um, uh, gray zone uh, moving towards documentary photography. And that was the part of photography I was mm -hmm. interested in. And is there exactly. anything else than uh, Kharkiv and Odessa and Bird in Flight? Mm, not so much. Unfortunately, not so much. There is also a price uh, of Pinchuk Center uh, price, which is like definitely connected with the, with, with the field which you uh, mentioned. Um, uh, there are not so much many. And one of the problem, uh, because there is no such things as grants and institutional support. So a lot of uh, people even some of them are quite famous, like Valentin Bo, for example, who was a form uh, winner and he's in a lot of festivals. They actually have a completely another job. They can't work as a photographer. They can't survive with this. So 
this is uh, yeah this is another question and um I just briefly wanted to to back uh, how we show this work uh, in this year. So if you can, uh, yeah, you can go to the YouTube video which uh, which I sent the link. So this uh, year, we collaborate with um, two things. So again, to be seen by public. So we can see this video, and we show the works of the uh, winners on the biggest LED screen in Europe. Uh, on a uh, Hulliver, uh, it's a mall, and um, so we show a slideshow with a uh, finalist on these huge screens. They're like, you see, they the, the enormous. Yeah, looking great. And uh, at the same time, we collaborate with a, uh, a, n a net, uh, network of... Uh, Cinema, and uh, they I'm having show, a question when you can, uh, when you can hear me. Just tell me. Uh, before movies, so when people, yes, sure, yeah, I hear you. Just please Great. go ahead. Um, I'm asking a very specific question because I'm thinking about that right now. That I'm seeing, in, I'm seeing these screens. Um, with the feedback of, I, I worked with Morocco yeah. for a a little time and I made exhibitions there of European yeah. of, of Moroccan photography and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the people of the everyday people of Morocco had very different mm -hmm. reactions to the pictures they were used to be shown to the pictures of worldwide photographers um, and, and it was usually not as ex not expected as, as much for me. What about the mm -hmm. pictures you're showing right now on these huge big screens? How do people react to them? Is it something that mm -hmm. they, they're, they're very mm -hmm. used to? Do they reflect that? Is it shocking? Is it mm -hmm. uh, boring? Is, are there any, any places where you think the, the, there is an understanding and sometimes there is not, for example? Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I feel your question. <laughs> we have exactly the same problem. Um, uh, so a part of this, as I told, we showed uh, before the films in the cinema. So it's like two minutes uh, before, like when people go to the cinema and uh, they see not only advertising, but also this. And we collaborate with the uh, owners of these uh, cinemas and they were happy to show it as a social uh, advertising. Mm, but obviously we were showing it not before every movies, not like a Spider-Man, you know, because normally people are not interested in, uh, in photography like we show. Um, uh, but more like, uh, let's say, art movies. But the thing is, yeah, uh, people react very differently. S some people do not understand uh, this kind of photography because they never saw it. But some people I really love. So I, I, I remember I was really impressed. So it was in the center of the city. Uh, and uh, we put pictures on the um, uh, showcase of one of the shop. And uh, it was an old lady who just was going to buy some bread and some milk. And she looked at these pictures and she started to cry. And uh, I asked her why she's crying. And she told it because like, after you say collapse, she almost never been in a, in the museum. She never been in the gallery because she doesn't feel her like look good enough. She doesn't have money. She doesn't know if it's like expensive or not. Go to the gallery, even the galleries are free. And um, it's the first time she just see proper quality of the work on the street, and she could look at them for free. And she was st standing like I don't know for twenty minutes looking to the pictures. So. Uh, I think it it it's a, for for my experience it was very good uh, reaction uh, from the older generation. It was very good feedback from the uh, like let's say younger and hipster generation. Um, actually, they were reacting on posters like way more interesting than on um, uh, interactive presentation. Interactive presentation was mostly interesting as this webcam stuff, you know. Um, uh, for the big screens, uh, it's 
it's a bit problematic because like most of the people knows that it's only advertising and people not so often look at the place of the advertising that's why i advise to the owners of the of this uh, uh, big mall that if they would integrate stuff like we show like if they will uh, Im implicate like social advertising at least a little bit for them it will be uh, very beneficial because when people let's say go from the metro they can know that sometimes it's advertising but sometimes even rare it's something useful for them something useful for people so they can look there and check and like this they will look at the screens more often because now the problem you know that like our eyes and our brains adopt to the places with a lot of advertising on our screen or on the street and we don't look at them but since it was so big of course some people saw it and most of the people saw it because they saw it in our social media and then they back and look at the screen on the street so this is a, a big a bit like long way but still um do you hear me do you see me we can hear you and we see you. yeah okay the problem that we have is still a 20 second uh, yeah 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 so yeah so that's uh, so for the for the next year um of course, it's not clear how we'll show us uh, how what we'll do in the situation of, of, of war. Um, and I hope the war will finish uh, before this. Obviously, if if the war will finish, but it still will be a huge field to do something. Um, also, as a Britain fly, we we actually launching like day, but like maybe today or tomorrow um, print sale. To collect money to support Ukraine, and you can check it on the Burson Fly uh, uh, price. And obviously, a lot of winners of the prize participate in this. So, what I, I, I was trying, so my idea was uh, every year to keep the winner of the prize, of previous year prize, as one of the jury members. So, like this, we always have can have fresh blood. And that's why you, you were speaking with uh, uh, Shadman Shahid. Um, and uh, and uh, so we are trying to stay in touch with all the winners uh, to for our future collaboration, like for example, this print sale or something else, and um, and also um, what I wanted to say, um, yeah, and I'm very happy that uh, some uh, some people who was in our uh, our finalist, uh, we select them before. Um, they won another award and then some of them mm, uh, won, you know, like Aperture Foundation or Form Foundation. So like the prices which are much older than we are and w way more established and have much more budgets and all, so on and so forth. I, I became um, aware yeah, of just the Flight to, Award to develop. because of its quality. I've really thought that the Birds in Flight uh, Award was outstanding. And for me, it was a kind of surprise to realize later it comes out of Ukraine. That was something I would have not uh, thought of. And mm -hmm. um, if you have that that um, print sale with Birds of Flights, please send us um, the, the details or the links to it. We will be happy to post and to support. And yeah. what I see with the names that you had been recommended, like yeah. Shatman Scheid from Bangladesh or Donald Weber, I think he's originally Canadian, living in the Netherlands. I've met both of them at the Shobi Mela Festival mm -hmm. in Bangladesh. And if you know, like Donald's work, he lived for a long time in Ukraine mm -hmm. and he did an amazing work about Ukraine. In Ukraine, yeah. Um, did the two of you meet in Ukraine or... Uh, mm -hmm later when he was then relocating to the netherlands when you we knew each other no we, we knew each other we knew uh, work of each other we knew the name of each other uh, but then uh, we obviously started to be much more close uh, during my uh, participation in the program uh, and he was ahead of the program uh, but of course like uh, donald has a very special feelings to Ukraine and you can see from his social media he's really supporting Ukraine and yes things the program was and the the, the topic of our uh, lecture today is like photography as a social impact uh, so for me the goal is to be this bridge you know between like uh, uh, European ideas which I really love and respect and like local ideas which is also all, all, also like and respect so helping to be this communicator 
is uh, actually my goal. And uh, Donald was very supporting me in this. And uh, he was telling me a lot of times that, like, um, you know, you need to go to, like, constantly to Ukraine and, like, share these ideas and, like, uh, trying to... And because, as, as Karin mentioned very, very correctly, the thing is, like, you always have an interest, uh, local interest, and, like, uh, interest from abroad. It's like... Uh, you know, like Minister of Foreign Affairs and <laughs> Minister of Interior Affairs, you know. So, for example, with this exhibition in, uh, with the posters and, uh, and web cameras, surveillance cameras, for, for, in, for Kyiv, physical posters was more, the more important, more interesting, because it's not very common in Kyiv, but in Paris, for example, it's quite often, it's nothing new. But surveillance camera with the idea of like, you know, it was like Gilets Jean, it was all these protests against like su su surveillance cameras. For European, it's very, uh, it's very uh, clear uh, message. And um, it's interesting in Ukraine, but, uh, uh, but people have a much more urgent stuff to, to worry about. So for me it's important to to create this you know the balance that it will be interesting for both sides you know uh, and uh, then i see uh, for the publication i also uh, send you uh, some links so it's a gap magazine in netherlands then uh, uh, british photography magazine in 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 uh, uk and then uh, uh, and then uh, fish eye magazine in france so all this media they pay attention to the different aspects of the awards, you know? And for me, it's very important when we create it, kind of to make it the way that one of the angle will be clear for, 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 for the audience, you know, for different audience. And this is what I was telling yesterday that the most challenging for me is find the language uh, which will be understandable. So you see, for example, in this picture, Mm, I like to document it. So it's our pictures, and then you have uh, graffiti and drawings and some advertising somebody put uh, on the pictures. And it's very important for me that uh, it exists like this. And uh, the idea was also like I wanted to collect these prints and make a sale of these prints. But this is uh, again like the difference, uh, like European buying and collectors I'm market sorry, is, is I, it's still not so developed that people can um, buy. You know that this is the, the poster, yes. the poster mm. picture of circulation this year. Good job. Sorry. We selected the same one. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry but we did first. I'm, I'm sorry to say this. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, you I'm know, very it's not, it's not exactly a, she, she a run. So popular. <laughs> So sure, sure. Yes, yes. I completely agree. But you know, uh, uh, I, I'm 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 saying this not to compete. I'm saying this that for us, it was uh, very important to yeah to be on international level. And of course, we were thinking about prices as your pri uh, as as your festival or like all other prices. Because yeah, Birds and Fly is quite young, is like, uh, as I mentioned, like five years old. So for us, it's very important to look at the quality and level of international prices and like uh, be on the same level. So that's why, um, and you know, not to repeat, but select this uh, level of work with kind of our capacity. And, and, and so and this is important. That's why I, I, I didn't want to say that we compete and say like, oh, look, we're first and then like, yeah. Well, um, maybe to, to wrap it up, I can really say that you achieved something in those five years. Yeah, um, you for sure got my personal attention. Um, I'd love to, to see what you chose. I did like to see what you chose. Thank you so much. I also like the, the approach of showing it differently, the connection between the surveillance camera and the posters. And uh, I hope that Bird in Flight is going to continue even through those hard times. And uh, we will put um, the print sale on our channels. Thank you so much. And, um, yeah, if you have somebody that you can recommend to us to talk to in the future, please do so. Um, but I think today we all have seen a great uh, presentation will, of the magazine, of the award, and 
um, well, excuses everybody that is watching that later for the delay in time. Um, that um, was a little bit difficult uh, with the 20 seconds, but I think the information has been passed on, the presentation has been seen. So um, I would thank you, Dimitri, for your time and your insights. Yeah, especially yesterday, the talk was very mind open. Thank you so for much. Me. I, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, thank you so much. Um, I wish you like all the best in the future, and I hope that our thank you. Thank you for inviting. It was a pleasure and like. Us. And um, thank you, thank Karine, you. for participating under those difficult thank you so much. circumstances. And I think we will yeah. soon have more talks here. And um, yeah, come back. You know where you're going to find us. Thank you, Karin, and thank you, Boris. Have a nice day. Yes, thanks to thanks everyone. Sorry, sorry bye for bye the noise. Bye. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you, Karin. Thank you. So, thank, yeah. Thank you.